delight is on for you, an evening of reconciliation during this Advent season. Times are as follows. Wednesday, December 15th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at St. Peter Church and St. Christopher Church. Save the date for our Birth of the King celebration on December 18th at St. Christopher Church. Our young people will be involved in this Mass, a special birthday present for Jesus. More details in bold. Our new breaking bread books are infused. Please do not take these home. Leave them in the pews for your fellow parishioners. Mass times for Christmas and New Year's are now in the bulletin and on our website. Lectors, please pick up your workbook in the sacristy. Please check the bulletin and our website for upcoming events and news.
to thank Chris uh, so much. Uh, Chris the Creek Ball, one of our parishioners, has helped us in so many ways to, to get to know St. Faustina better. And we pray, we, excuse me, we pray the chaplet uh, as a group, chaplet of Divine Mercy every Thursday morning right here at the church. And in so many ways, Chris is so humble, but she has done so much. And we just want to hear uh, a little bit more about your ideas and our spirituality in our parish. It's something new, but... As Chris has said, she'll be in the back of the church if you just want to sign your name and we can, can hopefully begin just a new endeavor that we think is so important that we can be like St. Faustina more and trust and have hope in that trust in God. Even in difficult moments, we know there's always so much to be joyful for on this Galate Sunday in order now that we can celebrate this Mass with joy in our hearts and with trust in his mercy, we ask him to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, Yeah. 
Do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now, the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned in one of our congregations that it's actually kind of rare that we get to have four full weeks of Advent. A lot of times that last week of Advent is a lot of times shorter, it's not quite as long. Uh, but this year we're really blessed because we have four full weeks to celebrate this beautiful season, which we're already halfway through, if you can believe it or not. We made our way right through this wonderful season. It's a beautiful time of our church here, and really at the heart of the season of Advent is hope. It's a wonderful virtue the virtue of hope. And you know, we can hope for all sorts of things. We hope that we can hope in almost anything. We hope for, for good weather. We hope for, for a wonderful Christmas this year. We hope that Father Adam's homily is short tonight. <laughs> we hope for every, we hope for all sorts of things. And Advent is a season where we have to have high hopes. What are the hopes that you have? A lot of our hopes are the same. A lot of hopes for our children. We hope that they can be spared some of the mistakes we made in our life. We hope that they can learn from us. We hope that they can have a better life. We hope in technology. We do in science. We hope that the generations that come after us that maybe they'd be spared some diseases. Maybe they would be spared the health problems that we've been affected with. Maybe our grandchildren won't have to somehow experience those things. We have all kinds of hopes. That's why I love this season. I think it's a good time to have some hopes in our heart. And the people in the Old Testament, we think about them so much, don't we? Or in the season of Adam, we think about Isaiah, we think about Jeremiah, we think about all the prophets, and they had really high, high hopes. High hopes for the Messiah. They couldn't wait till he would come. And they hoped that when he would come, he would bring to them in their lives peace and tranquility, he would bring fulfillment, he would teach them. And isn't it amazing that the hopes that we have probably aren't all that much different than their hopes? And we know that God is a God that always satisfies our hope. What are your hopes for the next two weeks for the season of Advent? It can, will it look different for you the next two weeks? How can we celebrate the season more? Maybe we can hope to have some quiet time in prayer when the world is so loud around us, so much going on, we might hope to be able to set some time in the next couple of days. Maybe my hope for you is that you get to know God's mercy more, like St. Faustina. And I hope, and we can hope to experience that mercy and confession this week. We'll leave the light on a campaign from 6 to 9 on Wednesday night about confessions and hope that maybe you experience God's mercy as you prepare to celebrate His Son's Nativity. I hope maybe you'll think about what Krista and I said. You're also spiritual. You have that beautiful gift of spirituality, and we just want to support each other. Maybe you have some hopes to join that spiritual committee. 
But whatever the hopes are that you have, let's try to realize them. Let's not be afraid to have big hopes for our parish and, and for our community, our country, and certainly our loved ones. Because all of our hopes are, are found in the Lord's presence with us that we prepare Christmas for and that we prepare to welcome now in the Eucharist. My friends, our hopes are high this evening as we gather and we celebrate our faith and we recite with a unified voice, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in pardon of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried.
us to our saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
The mystery of faith. Take away the 
Scripture this afternoon is number 66, Marana, number 66. Joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. 
Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. When the Mass is ended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let's make ready the way of the Lord by singing together number 62. Ready the way. Thank you.